A very good morning to you. Welcome to the West Ham Voice on a Wednesday morning. Now, I'm recording this on Tuesday night and I've only just managed to get myself together to be able to do this. Um, I was going to do a West Ham weekly on Tuesday night, but I'm afraid I just didn't have the energy to do so. Got back from Newcastle um, late afternoon and then had to go to work and uh, just had no energy. It was rather sapping on Monday. Uh, we celebrated and we celebrated well into the early hours of Tuesday morning. You just don't do these things uh, on a weekday. <laughs> Look, if you're new to the channel um, and if you enjoy the content, if you appreciate the content, then please do consider becoming a subscriber of the channel. And whether you're new or existing uh, or just passing through, uh, please do hit the like button if you like the content. So, the game against Newcastle United at St. James's Park was the first of several games that will be played on a school night over the coming weeks. Now, after we host uh, Arsenal at the London Stadium this coming Saturday, we are then back on the road with a Tuesday night visit to Leicester City at the King Power Stadium on the 3rd of December. And then we host uh, Wolves at the London Stadium on the 9th of December. And then we uh, finish off the, uh, with a visit. Well, we don't finish off, but another weekday uh, game uh, the following Monday at Bournemouth on the 16th of December. And perhaps, who knows, midweek games could start to become our lucky omen. Uh, they might become our favourite times of the week to play rather than the weekend, especially if we put in similar performances to the one that we did against Newcastle at St. James's Park on Monday night. Now, over 3,000 fans made it uh, to Newcastle, um, the trip to up north. Despite the team having not turned up for most of this season, what the fans do is they always turn up. Uh, just about every single pundit gave us absolutely no chance of getting any kind of positive result against an informed Newcastle team. Mind you, I've got to be honest, almost every West Ham fan gave us no, no chance either. And just a couple of minutes into the game, uh, when a defence splitting past found its way to Alexandra Izak, uh, in which he scored from, <laughs> many of us uh, probably started to wonder why we bothered to even go all the way up there on a Monday night. But the doom, the doom didn't last long because the linesman was awake and VAR for once against Newcastle was on our side and it was confirmed that Isaac was offside and the doom was lifted. And then just 10 minutes into the game with our first corner of the uh, game, um, West Ham fans way up in the gods of the uh, stadium erupted because uh, with a classic header, Thomas Socek from a wonderful outswinging uh, corner from Emerson put us ahead. <laughs> One nil, which meant, <laughs> as logic would dictate, that if uh, Newcastle were going to have to win, they would have had to score two against us. Uh, some faith there, eh? Uh, but did we strike too early? Well, look, I don't know. The lineup was interesting. Uh, without uh, suspended Edson out. There was a lot of confusion about Alvarez, whether he was available to play or not. I thought he was available, and then I was told he was suspended. And then um, people that watched my, pu uh, my preview suggested that uh, he was available, but lo and behold, he wasn't. And it was an interesting lineup. Without Alvarez, I guess we all thought that Guido Rodriguez would automatically start in the holding midfield role, but lo and behold, Houdin Lopetegui didn't play a holding midfielder. Um, and, I, and I started to think, surely uh, Lopetegui has not decided to go for it uh, away from home against Newcastle. And, and he did. He actually went for it. The shackles were off and we had two central midfielders in the starting lineup who loved to pass the ball. And we had Thomas Socek, who is our midfield disruptor. So Lopetegui, um, I started to wonder, you know, which of the three central midfielders was he going to use as a holding midfielder? And he actually did not use any of them as a holding midfielder. 
Uh, it seemed that he wanted the team to be to have the shackles off. It seemed that he wanted the team to actually, you know, try and outplay Newcastle in the middle of the park. And it's an area that I think many West Ham fans would say has been quite weak this season. Ar ironically, it's the centre center of midfield that we felt has kind of let us down in some way. Um, so why now? Why did Lopetegui decide to do this? Some would argue that this is yet, again, a Lopetegui not really knowing what his, uh, his best 11 are, uh, and he has taken just another roll of the dice uh, without really knowing what the impact might be. And others would argue that Lopetegui is right to continue tinkering and changing the team until he finds the right formula. And one has to be honest, on Monday night, the midfield three of Paqueta, Socek and Carlos Soler looked absolutely perfect. Now, whilst Lucas Paqueta uh, still often gives the ball away, and he did it again against Newcastle on Monday, um, by his recent uh, standards, um, he's, he actually had a comfortable game uh, on Monday night. And uh, I guess having a player like Soler, who's probably on his same wavelength, um, seemed to work just fine for him. Thomas Socek, for all his supposed inabilities in modern day football, just never really lets West Ham down uh, too often. And he looks sprightly and confident. And of course, scoring the goal was uh, fantastic to boost, further boost his confidence. But um, Carlos Soler, the man who I've mentioned that uh, I haven't really seen enough of to warrant him staying at West Ham United, um, is the man, what was for me, the man of the match. He played a really prominent role in central midfield. He was picking the ball up, carrying it, spraying it around, driving it forward, being somewhat of a connection between defence and attack. And well done to him, because um, I think he proved quite a few doubters wrong. Now, all right, it's only one game. We want to see this on a regular basis. But uh, in general, Carlos Soler probably was the difference in midfield for West Ham. It's without a doubt uh, his best performance in a West Ham shirt. And without a doubt, it was West Ham United's best performance of the season so far. Aaron Wambisaka, uh, we go back to the team sheet. Uh, Aaron Wambisaka and Emerson uh, took their roles. I did suggest that maybe um, Lopetegui might be going for the rip for the old guard, and I thought maybe Soufal might have got a shout uh, over Aaron, Aaron Wambisaka, but Lopetegui stuck with Wambisaka and Emerson, and they were still encouraged to mar maraud forward, but this time it felt a lot calmer. It felt a lot more measured. And uh, if they got caught out of possession, or, or out of position, sorry, um, I think the team overall did better as a unit in defending. But these two players were also afforded uh, opportunity to get back in their defending roles, instead of sort of being stuck right up at the wrong end of the pitch when we lost the ball. Todibo and Kilman looked comfortable all night. Uh, that's until Todibo had issues with his stomach. I... I don't know what was going on there, and he needed to come off. Uh, but Mavropanos uh, was an able substitute. He seamlessly got uh, uh, into the into the team uh, when when Bissak, when uh, Toddy Bow had to be subbed. And uh, with regards to the goalkeeper, um, I remember Fabianski having really just one clear chance, uh, one one clear uh, save to make. Otherwise, he probably had one of the quietest games that any keeper would have in the Premier League this season. And of course, we had uh, Crescencio Somerville uh, and uh, Jared Bowen out on the right uh, and left, and they did what was expected of them. But the other player for me that uh, really had to uh, has to be praised was Mikel Antonio. Now, I know you've heard me over the past season or two, um, you know, suggesting that Antonio really is is a backup sub at best rather than a player that should be starting in games. Um, but I've got to give credit where credit's due. Antonio was superb against uh, Newcastle on Monday night. You know, he was, in a way, he was back to his best. Um, he was bullish. Uh, he he challenged for every ball. Uh, he he went for every every ball. He he gave um, uh, Newcastle uh, defenders uh, 
quite a torrid time. And when we see Antonio playing in that way, we laud him, don't we? You know, we, we, that, that's the sort of uh, Mikel Antonio that we want to see. But if I'm going to be a little bit contentious here, um, we kind of seen this from Antonio before, especially when he's getting close to his contract ending. He starts to perform consistently. He starts to perform well. He gets a new deal and then he goes to be in average or quite poor again. And I hope that's not the case with Antonio. I actually don't think Antonio will get a new deal at West Ham at the end of this season, to be honest with you. You know, he's come up to the age of 35 um, and, you know, he's had a good career at West Ham. But um, I think maybe this will be his last season. But look, having said that, I think he was superb. I think he actually absolutely had, he had a storming game, a really, really good game. And maybe, maybe by him not having to play in the recent international break actually did us a favor. Um, Antonio, as we know, it was uh, two legs against uh, the USA in the CONCACAF uh, Nations League quarterfinal. Um, Antonio was not eligible for the first game. I think he was suspended. And then, of course, he had issues with his passport, having lost his passport, couldn't get a, a visa to get to America in time. So he missed the second leg as well. And Jamaica's loss was really our benefit, to be honest with you. But it does bring up a separate question with Antonio as to whether he should continue with his international career or whether he should focus only on West Ham if he wants to prolong his career at the club beyond this season. Now, look, I've always stated that every player has every right to represent their nation, and it's a privilege for players to do that. But with Antonio, as I've said, soon turning 35, a decision on his international career continuing is a serious one that he himself must consider. But still, I take uh, nothing away from him. He was superb against Newcastle on Monday night and credit to him for the performance that he put in. Now, our second goal, of course, came from Wan-Bissaka when he marauded forward. Um, he picked the pass up from uh, Jared Bowen uh, inside Newcastle's 18-yard box and he drove a low shot which came off the post and went in. It was no more than we des that we than we deserved. We matched and even bettered Newcastle United throughout the whole game. It wasn't a game that you could argue that um, uh, we were lucky in. You know, we, we've had some results this season, Man United as an example, where you know people are saying we were lucky in getting a win there. But um, apart from the offside goal that I mentioned, uh, uh, Newcastle's goal, we didn't seem to be troubled at all throughout the game. Yeah, Newcastle, they had their moments, but West Ham, for me, were in control. Now, I know what many people have said and what they're likely to continue saying. It was more about Newcastle having an off day than it was about West Ham United playing really well and dominating the game. But if you look at the brief highlights, for example, that Sky put out, on their YouTube channel, you'd be forgiven to think that Newcastle were all over us and they dominated the game themselves. In the couple of minutes of highlights that they showed, they showed us scoring our two goals. I had no choice, did they? But the rest of the two minutes was taken up by every chance, or just about every chance, that Newcastle had. And the, and the stats themselves read very differently to the highlights that were shown. Look, they had two shots on target. We had six on target. Okay, they had more shots uh, overall, but our, you know, 50% of our shots were on target. We had really decent possession. I mean, you know, I've said before, I'd rather have less possession and, and have better results, but we had the best of both worlds against Newcastle. 48% possession away from home is no mean feat at all. Um, and other, you know, the rest you could see there. I'm um, Fabianski, the last one, he only had two saves to make, whereas uh, then uh, Newcastle had uh, four saves to make. So we were in the game, we were at, totally in the game. It was a joy to watch, and that's the reason why over 3,000 fans made the trip on a Monday night. Because football is a, is a drama that unfolds before your very eyes. You don't know what's really going to happen. Yeah, you can make predictions based on uh, past performances, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't actually know what's going to happen until the game starts unfolding in front of you. 
And that's what's that's the beauty, isn't it? That's the beauty of football. That's why we do go to away days on a Monday night and <laughs> all the way up the other end of the country. But um, is this finally the start of the Lopetegui era? Or was this just a one-off? Was this a bit of a false dawn? Now, throughout most parts of the season, we've witnessed glimpses of what West Ham might be capable capable of doing. But it's been snippets. It's been, you know, uh, the odd few minutes here and the odd half there. And it's not been consistent enough. But on Monday, on Monday night against Newcastle, it all came together. The passing was good. The movement was good. The defending was great by the whole team. The control of the game, the pace of the game suited us. We we dictated the pace. And for once, every player seemed to know what their role was in this team. And when West Ham fans started to chant Ole at every pass that we made, the confidence in the team just grew more and more. So I guess now the question is, can we maintain this? Or was Monday night a flash in the pan? Well, what better way to find out than a visit by a team like Arsenal this coming weekend? Look, we took our revenge uh, on Newcastle for that defeat last March in uh, last season when two rather dubious penalties were awarded for them. And yes, there was a shout for a penalty in this game as well at the end of the uh, at the end of the game when Dinos bear hugged Callum Wilson and to be honest most of us thought it'd be given. But having seen seen it, the highlights, um, I guess you've got to, <laughs> I'm laughing when I say it, but I guess there probably wasn't enough contact. Uh, the bear hug wasn't hard enough <laughs> to warrant a penalty. Look, we broke a few curses on Monday night. Our first win since the 2 0 win over Crystal Palace right at the beginning of the season. Another clean sheet, which is our third in the league and our fourth overall in 14 games, which is kind of okay but we want to see more of them. And Callum Wilson didn't score against us. So back to the question, can we continue this mould? Well, I don't see why not. You know, West Ham United, the players would have walked away with a lot of confidence from that game on Monday. And um, we might be brought back down to earth on Saturday against Arsenal. But let's not forget, Arsenal gave us a pretty bad thrashing last season when they beat us 6-0 at our ground. So if we can put in a similar display to the one against Newcastle, then there is hope. Um, We're going to have to do it, however, without Huden Lopetegui on the touchline, as he's now suspended because he picked up a yellow card uh, during the game. That was the time when Antonio had his shirt uh, ripped off him and uh, the referee gave nothing. I mean, Antonio, you know, his shirt was ripped apart, but uh, the referee gave nothing and Lopetegui lost it. So he won't be on the touchline at the weekend. Look, the weekend of football that we've just witnessed has given us some interesting results and displays. Palace, they got 2-2 draw away at at Aston Villa. uh, Wolves thrashed Fulham 4-1 at Craven Cottage. Spurs thrashed the champions, Man City 4-0 at at, at Man City's ground. Southampton giving uh, Liverpool a bit of a scare before Liverpool won it with a penalty. And Ipswich, um, peeing on Amarim's debut as Man United manager, you know, they took an early lead. Uh, Man United looked like they were going to spe- uh, have a good afternoon, first game for Amarim, but Ipswich played well and pulled it back and maybe might consider themselves unlucky not to have won. So to top off a weekend of topsy-turvy football, up pop little old, old West Ham to take all three points against Newcastle and inform Newcastle but to do it in a manner that we deserved rather than being lucky. So yes, maybe we can do it again this weekend and I don't see why not. After all, all we ever ask for is for a team to play with a bit of desire, with a a lot of passion. Uh, And we did that against Newcastle on Monday night. No reason why we can't do it against every every other team uh, in the Premier League between now and the end of the season. And that could start against Arsenal this coming weekend. Let's see how it goes. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Really appreciate it. Like I said, if you're new to the channel and you're not yet a subscriber, then do consider becoming a subscriber. And uh, whether you're new, existing or just passing through, please hit the like button. 
I'll be back again soon with another show. Um, I'm still trying to write a script about the Academy and I will do that. Uh, and uh, I messaged uh, uh, one of the Academy uh, journalists um, and I asked if he'd like to come on uh, to uh, do a show with me. He's agreed in principle. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll, maybe I'll do a show with um, one of the journalists from The Athletic about that particular subject, about the Academy. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. And I'll see you all very soon.